Why, hello there. My name is Dredd, and this is Miss Valley Entertainment News. I'm going to bring you some more news here that I have not even yet seen about the game coming out on March 7th, 2024 by a small company from Romania called Tiny Trinket Games. This is the uh, Zoria Age of Shattering, a, a party-based, turn-based, fluid turn-based uh, CRPG in a fantasy setting, war-torn land, to deal with politics and uh, outpost management and all kinds of other amazing things. If you haven't seen the last video with the newest trailer, uh, gameplay trailer, go watch that. Um, this right here is, like I say, coming out March 7th, 2024. We're just going to cover what came out on January 11th, 2024. And again, I have not seen this yet. A Q&A session with the developers of Zoria Age of Shattering, which is being put out by Anshar Publishing, by the way. Let's uh, let's hop into this. It's about 18 minutes long. Again, I have not heard this. I'll probably be stopping it here and there to comment. Let's get into it, though. Hello, everyone. My name is Fennen, and I'm from Anshar Public. Okay, first of all, first of all, I don't know how you all feel about that, but I feel like she's being very, very quiet. Um, I may need to adjust that. Um, oh, desktop audio. Let's see if we can boost this a little bit because I'm feeling like she's really, really quiet. Let's see here. See if there's any better. Uh, today I have. Hello, everyone. My name is Fennen, and I'm from Anshar Publishing. Uh, today I have with me developers from Zoria, Age of Shattering. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. And uh, we will be doing some Q&A session. I, uh, if this is not loud enough, I will check it after I finish recording, and I will boost the audio for the desktop stuff. So I'm sure it'll be fine for when you're hearing it. I'm struggling to hear it a little bit. I'm cranking my headphones, and I still can't hear, and the sound's all the way up, but I don't know what they did with that. But uh Probably should have fixed that uh, and char publishing before you uploaded the video. Would have helped a lot. Anyways. Uh, thank you, everyone, who sent uh, their questions. Uh, and oh, let's jump into it. The first one. Guys, how long is the main campaign? <laughs> yeah, we, we get that question a lot, to be honest, even on our Discord uh, channel. Where top of our heads, main story only would be twelve between 12 and 15 hours. But if you want to do all the side quests, uh, we I think we we are rocking around twenty plus hours to be honest. Okay, so for those of you who may not be able to understand with the accents and the low volume, uh, they're saying that the main story quest just to play the main story is twelve to fifteen hours, somewhere in that range. And if you were to play all of the side quests and everything else, you're looking at about twenty hours. Because there is a lot of side quests to to be done and a lot of crafting and alpha systems and missions and stuff like that. So Crafting yeah. missions. There's a lot of content, but Lots of content. main story, plot, 12 to 15 hours. Yeah, that's our goal. Awesome. Thank you. Next one. Can you respect your build? Yes, you can respect your build. In the beginning, there was a cost associated with it, but we came to the conclusion that uh, removing this cost, uh, it would be beneficial for the player because we want the player, the user, to experiment with the build as much as possible. And we have a lot of classes in the game, and we want you as a player to, uh, even after each combat, to just respect that certain class. So lots of classes in the game, and they want you to be able to freely respect your character whenever you want. So you can go through combat, and you can be like, hey, uh, I want to try a different character or whatever, and just respec for free, no cost to you as the player to do that go with another uh, another skill tree and test it out in the next combat and so on and see what are the results that's for cool. that respect that, that's helpful so, yeah it's possible and it's free of course <laughs> next one can you freely change your companions in the team yes this is one of the pillars of our game you can actually we have many classes and you will be able once you reach a certain point in the storyline and you reach the outpost and you meet all the people in outpost all the npcs you will be able to reconfigure your party composition, your party setup. And while doing quests and adventuring in dungeons and uh, unlocking uh, outpost systems, um, more and more followers will come to your aid and you will have a bigger roster to choose from. So as far as your party and stuff, if you want to change out your party, once you get to the outpost area, 
Uh, you're able to freely change out your party members for others because obviously all the party members will be different classes and different things. And then while you're out adventuring through dungeons or getting things for the outpost out in the wild or whatever else you're doing, uh, you'll be kind of uh, meeting and unlocking other people who will become party members, probably go back to your outpost and be available for you to use as well in the party. So also another thing that's super important, we have player versus environment abilities for each class. Let me give you just one example. Um, a wizard can conjure up a bridge that you can otherwise, uh, otherwise it would be destroyed. And by conjuring the bridge, it will allow your party members and your team to go to unexplored uh, areas of, uh, of a dungeon. So that's cool. I mean, you could find areas on the map that you would not be able to get to normally, but if you have a wizard who is able to conjure a bridge, you can conjure a bridge, you can go across it, and you can explore that area of the map that you would have no other way to get to. That's kind of cool. Encouraging you to probably have a wizard in your party. But for example, if your party does not have a wizard at that point, you can go back to the outpost, recruit one, put it in your party, and come back again in the dungeon to pass that, uh, that bridge. Ah, so if you're in a dungeon or whatever and you can't get over a chasm and you don't have a wizard with you, you may want to go all the way back to your outpost, recruit the wizard, come back, so that you could do that part of the content. Now, I'm not sure if that's necessary for the gameplay, like, or if that's something, an optional piece. And they made it sound like it was more optional. But uh, hopefully it's not like you have to get over this in, a, in the dungeon to, to, to get through the dungeon, you know, and though they got to go all the way back. But we'll, we'll see. I'm not sure on that. I'm trying to kind of uh, summarize this and make it a little more clear because I am struggling to hear with the volume, which I've got cranked now and I can still barely hear it. And I'm also, you know, the accents, everybody's got one, right? If I spoke another language other than English, I'd have one as well. Uh, well, I still have one anyways, but you know what I mean. Um, so not putting anybody down, just I know some people are better at uh be able to uh, hear what's actually being said than others. I'm just trying to help those of you who can't. And every uh, class that we have in game has a player versus environment ability that can. So every class has a player versus environment ability, which is what he said with the wizard and the, and the bridge. Something you can do to change your environment or maybe extend the gameplay if that person is there in a certain area. And actually, Unlock content as you progress throughout the Unlock content with it. Can cool. players make yeah. moral or ethical choices that affect the story and gameplay? Yes, we have some player choices uh, in our game. Um, while progressing through the main story, you will uh, at some point reach to some choices. You either go with path A or path B. Path A, for example, will unlock a zone and path B will unlock another zone. Something that is very important, once you pick a side, like you pick a path, in order to do the other path, you actually need to restart the entire game. This this will add a bit of replay value to the... Oh, okay. So moral and ethical choices, they're saying there's, there's choices in the game where you either go one way or you go another. And at that branch, once you make your choice, you are not able to go and change that choice. You're locked out of certain gameplay in the game, and you would have to go back and restart the game to actually be able to make the secondary choice. So it gives you replayability in the game. Uh, to the game, to the whole experience. Another, another um, point would be that uh, in some quests, you can actually choose to, let's say, kill an NPC or save him, and the outcome will be different, obviously. So again, player choices like kill or save an NPC in a certain certain area will give you, uh, you know, varying d difference in your gameplay depending, right? It's it's going to make an actual difference going forward. So there are a few choices here and there. Uh, being a team of three, we didn't want to go overboard with this mechanic because it's super heavy on assets, on story, and yeah. voiceover and stuff like that. But we believe that... I think I think the team at Larian knows that. It's uh, making that many choices makes your game that much heavier. You're doing so much more work every time there is a meaningful choice in a game. And they're saying there's only there's only so many as a small team they could put in, I think is what they're saying. 
we have these choices where they actually matter in gameplay. So yeah, depending on what you choose, you will get different results. Get results from what you choose. Save the princess, not save the princess. If you guys know, save the chill reader, save the world. (laughs) Stuff like that. Classic. Classic, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's nice. Can you share how your game incorporates environmental interactions into puzzles, combat, or exploration? Yeah, this is something that I touched a bit uh, in the beginning. Each class has a player versus ability, player versus environment ability. Uh, the wizard has the conjuration spell. You can cross uh, chasms and uh, broken bridges. Uh, Lancer, for example, c- can clear the debris uh, from rubble and you can pass through the other side and explore more. Other thing we have, for example, as a system, we have formations. And by utilizing formations, you can actually like huddle up together your party and try to avoid traps that are on the ground that are un- otherwise, you can pass to them, but you will get a lot of damage and you- Oh, so by huddling up your party into a certain formation or whatever, you can avoid uh, damage that's basically comes from underground where you would normally pick up a lot more damage to be passed over it by, by being in a certain formation, you may negate or or do away with that damage from that environmental trap. Interesting. If one of your character dies, well, then it's game over. So you need to utilize that mechanic as well. And we also have like puzzle. The one thing that I super love is uh, when someone in a dungeon is not really careful where he steps and he steps a pressure tile and then all hell breaks loose. So we have that as well. You dungeon pressure tiles, you step on the wrong tile and oops, things go south real quick. Cool. Okay. You will you will discover it. I like the uh, I love I love the grids as they're discussing their work. It's great. I, I love to see that they have passion for their work. Yeah, in game. We we have a lot of hidden gems that for some players it will be fun. Uh for others I am one hundred percent they will probably I don't know, uh, <clears throat> swear at me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm the blame. <laughs> I see. Oh. And what do you think? What replayability value is in the 1.0 release? There are two major things and lots of other smaller things. The two major things as, uh, are as follows. One, you can pick and choose another class as you start. And by choosing a new class at the beginning of the, of the game, it can actually alter the gameplay experience in the beginning, at least until around level 10, 12. So almost half the game, basically. Um, that would be one thing. Uh, the, the other thing would be while progressing through qu- the quest line, you will get to those choices that we talked a bit earlier, and you either pick cho- uh, path A or path B. So you will unlock zone A or zone B. And if you want to see both of them at some point, you need to uh, basically play the game twice. The, the other thing is maybe in the first run, you will not do all the output system or all the missions, or you will not really focus on crafting. Actually, we suggest you focus a bit on crafting, but that's not that right. Um, <laughs> we suggest you focus on crafting. We try in our um, in our level design approach, to incorporate as much exploration as possible and small tidbits for the user to find. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but some of them are pretty funny. <laughs> That's all I can say. But exploration is another pillar, uh, key pillar for us. And we really hope that players will actually go and explore every corner. So little hidden gems they've placed all over the game, of course, and they're saying that we really, really hope people will just explore the land while they're out and about, not just always focusing on the mission, but focusing on other things, doing the crafting stuff, doing all the the smaller missions, just getting out and exploring the land and seeing what's there and how they can interact with it. That's what I'm getting out of this. Of the levels, basically, or dungeons. That's awesome. I'm an explorer myself, and uh, yeah, I love just going to Okay, I'm 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 just I'm just gonna say it. Pretty girl should never say on a, on a video that she's gonna explore herself. I'm sorry. 
absolutely, I had to say it. Um, I I really, I I really wish, um, she was more outspoken, and a little more, um, a little more professional. Um, I I, I yeah, she's so meek and quiet that um, as kind of the MC of this, the the person doing the question asking you know, on behalf of the 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 players who wrote in or you know the fans who wrote in. She she needs to be the one in charge here, and she's clearly like a follower here, not a leader. Um, that's not meaning to bash her or this video. I'm just saying the video would have been better with somebody asking the questions who's very good in front of the camera and the microphone and is a little louder and a little more forceful and a little 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 bit more animated and not so. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Nothing against her. She's probably a really nice person. The route and finding everything, and I love looting most of all. And I think in Zora, it's uh, especially satisfying with, uh, yeah, I like the barrels <laughs> popping. <laughs> I love yes, that. yes, yes, barrels popping. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am myself, um, I'm, I like hoarding, so yeah, I like loot as well. I like hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since we we're saying, uh, we're talking about replayability. Uh, will there be something like g New Game Plus? You mean like additional content? Mm, I mean like you finish the game and then if you want to replay it, uh, it has an additional uh, difficulty level, I would say. So it's not only like playing on the hard mode uh, from the get-go, but you can play for the whole game and then a new like hardcore mode is enabled. It's something uh, like in Souls-like. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I, I understand now. Hmm. To be honest, no. For for now, we will have uh, story mode, normal, and hard. Um, we got three, three categories of difficulty. At least at some at this point, hard is pretty hardcore. To be honest, so no. The the short answer answer would be we don't have that. We just keep to easy, normal, and hard, and that's it. We believe that hard for now is. Pretty okay. It's it's fine. It's fine. More than that, it would become unplayable, or simply you would simply not be able to beat bosses and stuff like that in the game. Actually, I well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, ga gamers nowadays they'll take that as a challenge. They'll be like, "Yep, yeah, nope, I breeze through hardcore mode," because they'll do it. You know they will. But anyways, uh, agree. I played on normal and sometimes, well, you can't be playing mind mindlessly. You have to be. I, I I played some of their demos on 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 normal, and I I got party wiped quite quite often as soon as I got to a boss battle. It it wasn't easy. Mindful no. of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this, this was another approach for uh, for us when we did the combat. We didn't want super complex combat, but we didn't want super easy com com uh, combat. So we kind of did a mix between them. And the point that we are at right now, we are happy about it. You can't just mindlessly, mindlessly. Uh, yes, there are some encounters where everything will just go very smoothly, but other encounters, basically, you need to be present. That's it. You can't. It's not a. It's not a. Not a mindless uh, combat. You you do have to be thinking about what you're doing and being careful, or you you will get yourself into trouble. So they're saying yes. Uh, they didn't. They didn't make the combat super easy, but they didn't also. I don't think want to put it to be out of the reach of your average gamer either. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, okay, on to the next one. Uh, changing the path a little bit, but. Does your game offer modding support? And if so, what aspects can players modify or create? We we had this question uh, pop up in Discord as well. Unfortunately, no, we don't have modding support. The game was never intended to to, to have modding in mind. We, we didn't even envision. Think about it, we are a team of three. And Great. I can tell you it's a miracle we came this far. And we had this breakthrough that we managed to stay together and deliver it until this point. And um, yeah, modding was really not on our list, to be honest. And I, I really doubt this is something that Gabi, our, our developer, can, can answer 
better, to be honest. Uh, I don't think that modding can be added at some at this point in the process. So I don't know, maybe for Zoria two, if things go really well, maybe. But I yeah, I would not count it count for modding for Zoria one. No. Do you have plans for additional content or expansions post launch? On paper, I think we have three expansions. To be honest, on three paper. expansions on paper. Um, but if things go well with with the initial launch, we would like to do a, a, an, an update or a DLC something. I don't know. We would. Uh, we have at least I think four more new classes that would like to have in game. I think they've got quite a few classes to begin with. I think they've got like like maybe ten classes. Don't quote me on that, but I'm thinking they have quite a few. They're saying that they'd like to do a DLC if everything goes well, and or they have the money to continue. Uh, they'd like to bring out a DLC which would include four new classes, which basically means they had four classes they had to one reason or another not include in the game, um, probably because you know monetary reasons or something else. But again. It all depends uh, on on the launch and uh, the way the game is received and so on and so on. Yeah. And, and content Makes sense for a small you, developer. As in uh, zones. Yes, to be honest, if you when you will play the game, you will see the Badlands to the south, like super scorching deserts and stuff like that with oasis. Uh, we would like to go there. And we also we have a couple of uh, scenes that we started working on as a, I don't know, like a mood board, to be honest, to see how it would look like, how it would feel. And we have some stories to tell in those zones as well. So you've got a whole other desert zone that exists in the game, but you're not really there. And they would love to expand into that area. They've got some ideas for it already. So overall, we have the plans. We would really, really, really love to do them. And again, we have at least four, four classes, new classes that would like to implement as the content to do uh, as DLCs and stuff like that. And we believe that we still have a few more stories to tell regarding Zoya and where the whole plot is going. So fingers crossed. Mm, and I think I have a last one for you. Are there any interesting anecdotes or stories from the development process? It, it actually, one thing, it happened uh, quite recently. Uh, Neles, I'm not going to name names, but Neles, yes. He deleted the folder in uh, one of the scenes and the game was kind of broken for like a week or so and nobody knew why. Until, I know, Gabi made some magic with the, with the Git repository and it, it was all of the NPCs in the scene. All of them. Yes, all of the NPCs in the scene were deleted and... Oops. Uh, and uh, another thing, before we actually hired a 2D artist to do the UI, <laughs> I did the UI for um, throughout the years because we've been working uh, at this game since 2017. Wow. 2017. For all these, I made like 10 iterations for the UI for our game. And each each iteration was better than the last one and so on and so on. So by the time that the 2D artist came on board, we already knew what he needed to be done. And we just pointed, we want this and this and this and this and this. And everything went to super smooth uh, on that one. Hmm. And uh, another another funny thing, or actually it was it was kind of a bittersweet experience, to be honest. After Kickstarter, we wanted to do, to redo the characters for, um, we had the support from Anshar Studio, and we wanted to, to redo the, the characters to better represent what our vision for the game would be. And basically, once we had the character editor, we replaced I think 300 plus NPCs in game. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we kind of forgot to count them before we embarked on this one. You know, it yeah. was like, we're, we're going to redo them all. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Oh, his mic's nice and loud. <laughs> yeah. And other than that, I don't know. Um, two, two highlights for me would be 
while working with on gameplay mechanics uh, or not gameplay mechanics boss mechanics or the enemy mechanics and uh, doing abilities and particle effects for their abilities and stuff like that sharing them on discord with the uh, with our community that that kept me and us as a team going to be honest to see the reaction and the feedback that you get from the community that is something it's a uh, fuel for the fire basically so that kept us going yeah. and i don't know in i think as a last point level design wise i uh, i looked actually i looked a couple of days ago uh, some earlier work that i did and it was very cringy comparing to what we have today it was very cringy i would not buy that game <laughs> no it's learn, learn the a level lot you're of seven years that we saying. have yeah. now uh, in in the game does not even measure measure how it was like three four years ago so these Perfect. are just a couple Excellent. of things top of my head there are many many more but yeah that's it. Uh, <laughs> some of them we shouldn't mention <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> that was very, very sweet. Especially when you mentioned uh, sharing with community and everything. Just uh, what pushes you through uh, when you feel like maybe there is some kind of stagnation on the, or there is something, um, yeah, n not really working the way you want to. But just seeing that people like what you've done so far, it's just, I can imagine it's really, really helpful. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you so, so much um, for all the answers. So that was uh, community-based questions and things that were sent in for this Q&A session with the developers. Uh, really only one talked, but there's only three of them to begin with. So only two were there and <laughs> one only talked twice. Um, but you can imagine a three-person team working on a game since 2017, how proud they are to finally be bringing this game to light in uh, early 2024 here, March 7th. And, uh, you know, again, even if you don't like this game or you don't think it looks good or you don't think you want to play it, I, I would encourage you to go by the Discord or or go by, you know, and just give, give this young team um, just starting out in the industry of making their own stuff um, some words of encouragement because we need more small developers like this and, you know, I, I don't know if this game pushes any boundaries. I don't know if it does anything that another game doesn't do. I, I can't answer that question because I haven't played it. I, I do know the reveal trailer that just came out the other day that I covered showed so much more of the game than I've ever seen before um, in the demos that I played that I have I had no idea the scope of the game. Like, it, it actually surprised me. I thought it was going to be a much smaller scope. Um, since the scheme uh, went onto Steam, whenever that was, I think it might have been 2019 or something, it's been on my wish list. At various times, it's held top spot on my wish list for a long time. It's kind of got booted down a little bit because uh, I just didn't hear a lot. I wasn't active in their Discord, and I didn't hear a lot for a long time, and I was kind of wondering what was going on, and there was a delay. It was supposed to come out, I think, originally in September of last year. Um just made me concerned over things and it got pushed down my wish list, but it is coming back into my top 10 right now. And I'm going to be keeping a very, very close eye on this one. Price uh, price point is good. Come March 7th, I will be purchasing it and it will be uh, showcasing it over on probably my Miss Valley Gaming uh, YouTube channel. Um, I am excited for this, but I'm actually more excited for the developers. Just having been there for part of the journey with them. Um, people, we're trying to keep things as positive as we can here at Miss Valley Entertainment News. Uh, I appreciate you sitting through this with me. I know some of you have no interest in this game at all. Others of you are going to view the video on it and be like, eh, and pick at it. I, I get it. You know, if you're going to compare it to other games and you're going to compare it to larger studios with more people and more funds and more experience. Um, that's a natural thing to do, but I encourage you to take it as what it is, man. It is a small three-person company who's worked on a game for seven years and is finally bringing it to people. And it looks pretty decent. It looks pretty decent. So I'm hoping you all give Zoria Age of Shattering a shot. That is by Tiny Trinket Games out of Romania. It's put out by Anshar Publishing. And uh, this Q&A was just to fill you in a little bit more about what it is and who the people behind it are. So from Miss Valley Entertainment News, my name is Dred. We'll see you all later.
everybody. Keep your stick on the ice. Bye-bye. <laughs>